Okay, this is the third time recording this episode. Also the third time I've tried to record the Nike Air Max 90 top 10 list. And a few mental breakdowns later, we are here. Finally got it working properly. Big palaver with the software. This whole audio mic, you know, podcast vibes. It's a lot of work behind the scenes, you know. Let me tell you that for free, okay? For free. But anyway, enough of that. Thank you for tuning in today's episode. We are talking about a shoe that I think is getting very disrespected in the sneaker community. Not all, not all people, you know. A lot of people love it, just like myself. But I think it's about time I address the return of the Ferrero Rocher, okay? The Rocher run. The Nike Rocher run. Now, before we do that, as always, don't forget to leave a five star rating. And if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And welcome back. Didn't even welcome you guys. Welcome back to the life of a broski sneaker podcast where we have a good old waffle about sneakers. And with that all out of the way, just like Tom Daly. Let's dive right in. Perfect. Oh, mate, honestly, the earliest I've probably recorded any sort of content, nothing a nice cup of joe cannot fix. So, broskies, the Nike Roche run. Where do I start? I know where to start. Why is it getting so much hate? Like, I don't understand it. It was one of the most iconic shoes at a time. Ever, actually. I'm going to pull it out there ever. You know why? Mr. Yee, 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 Wheezy, Yeezy, whatever he calls himself now, even himself has come on record and said it. The Joe Rogan podcast. If you haven't watched that, go and watch that. It's very interesting in terms of sneakers. He even said he wanted his own Roche run, which was indeed the Yeezy 350. Okay, it's not a surprise. It looks near enough identical. It's more comfortable, don't get me wrong. It's more fashionable, you could argue. But that was his Roche run. Now, for someone as monumental as Kanye West to say that and come on record, that just deserves, well, that gives the sneaker more respect anyway, like instantly, you know, just like my coffee, instantly. He, um, he also said he saw it on everyone's feet, yeah? He wanted everyone to have that sort of vibe to his shoes or his 350. Now, there was a time, myself included, the Nike Roche run was all I wore. And a lot of people did the same. The all black version. Oh my goodness. What a colorway, what a shoe. Nothing outstanding in terms of the technology. But it defo did so much right in terms of comfort, style, looks, breathability, affordability as well. It was like 70 or 60 quid at the time. And then Nike kind of tried to fix something that wasn't broken. They brought out the Roche, I guess, 2.0. And they sort of added harder panels on the upper. And because it was more of a, like a fly knit material, mesh material on the top previously. And it just didn't bang the same. It wasn't like what we wanted. So we just kind of moved with the times. We slowly swayed a lot um, away from that shoe. And you couldn't really get the original anymore. You know, reselling wasn't really a thing back then like it is now. Yes, you had the odd thing here and there. The odd person, you know, those dodgy uncles that come to your house. Or the old barbershop, you know. When I had hair, of course, I'd go to a barbershop. But but no no seriously um the Roche one like I had about four pairs and I loved every single one of them I had like a black and sort of aqua turquoise midsole with like a a leopard print a Nike swoosh you know but that was the thing you'd want to get all these different colors and it was kind of like the Jordans of a time the Harachi of a time you know you just wanted to get all these different colors so you could wear it in all these different occasions like. Back then, as a kid, you'd want to like wear jogging bottoms, I don't know, like tracksuit bottoms. That was the thing. So you'd want something sporty-esque to go with it. And the Nike Roche run 
was a perfect example of that. Now, as far as the return of the Roche goes, could it make a good comeback, a big impact on the sneaker world, the sneaker community? I think so. I think so. I mean, depending on the rollout, depending on who they get for the marketing, the collaborations, the colorways coming out, and also if they push this sneaker enough, I do think it could be a thing again. Could it be on the same level as when it first dropped or when it was first popular? I don't know because we're, we're in a different time. Like Jordans are like, you know, elite in terms of popularity. Of course, you've got Air Max Ones now having their time again. You've got Dunks again as well. You know, all these different silhouettes, the 550s, the Mac attacks are coming back. Like all these shoes are like probably at the forefront now. But like I said, that sneaker was more of a sneaker you just sort of pop on any single time you wanted to. The gym, to go shops, to see your mates, you know. All these different places you could wear that shoe easily. Now, it could have a time in this current time. However, they need to get the pricing right. If they're going to push this sneaker for a hundred plus pounds, I'm not too sure. I don't think people are going to be wanting to pay that much for a Roche run when they paid, you know, I don't know, 60, 70 quid previously. Now, for what you're getting for your money, it's debatable whether it's worth it or not because it's literally like a mesh slash flying it, flying it upper with an EVA mid midsole. So it's nothing like, wow. Like for the boost, you could argue, okay, not that much. It's like 200 plus pounds now. But, you know, you could argue, okay, boost is boost. Yeah, fair enough. You're paying for the hype. You're doing all this. But the Roche run is as simple as it gets. So let's see, they have to get the pricing right, they have to get the collaboration, the marketing and the push right. And I've actually seen on Twitter, apparently, like, I'm going to pull it on the screen, make of it what you will. But apparently they are out in America and they are in outlets already, which is crazy, like Patsy Klein, yeah, crazy. I don't know how truthful that picture is. It looks legit, I won't lie to you. So I could be wrong though. I'm not gonna sit here and say, yep, that's gospel. But if any of my American watchers or listeners are here, please comment down below whether you've seen these in store or not, because I'm really intrigued to see like such an iconic shoe for me. It had a big impact on myself growing up and it had its moment, man. Like it really did. And I feel like People need to like let the nostalgia kick in and just remember the good times they had with that shoe. Because let's face it, when Nike bring a sneaker back, they know nostalgia sells. So this sneaker definitely is going to get a few people licking their lips, you know, pause. But I'll be in that category. I won't lie to you. I'm definitely going to try and scoop one up. I'm just very skeptical about the retail price. That's the only thing I'm worried about. And what colorways they come out with, whether they're going for the all black and all white version to start with, or whether, they, whether they're going to give a sort of like plain Jane, just boring colorway. And it's just not going to slap, you know? It's not going to slap. But let's see. Let's see whether these sit, even if they do come out. I mean, you know, there's a few teasers here and there. These might not even come out until next year. You never know. But let's see. Let's see, hopefully, you know, hopefully they come out 70 quid, 80 quid, pushing it, 90 quid, pushing it, very much pushing it, about my hairline. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'm hoping, bruh, I'm hoping, third time lucky, this podcast is out. This would have been out about three, four days ago. But hey, we move, we live, we learn, we do all of that good stuff. Anyways, broskies, thank you so much for tuning in. Hit up the poll down below on Spotify and also on YouTube. Leave your thoughts down below. Whether you think the return of the Roche is a good idea or not, whether you like the shoe at the time, whether you're looking forward to it, and just let me know. Let me know because I'm very interested to hear about it because I love the shoe and I want to know if you do. Okay. Anyways, broskies, thank you so much for tuning in whilst you're here, watching on YouTube, listening on Spotify. Take care, and of course, I'll be back in the next episode.